So um, beta, explain beta in two minutes. Okay, so uh, jumping in, uh, we'll start with the very dry textbook definition and then sort of unpack it. So what is beta? Uh, it's the amount of systematic risk in an asset measured uh, relative to the average asset. So the, the big thing here is to jump in and understand what is systematic risk. So then this is gonna be a result of, of diversification and it's a very important concept in finance. So, the idea here is what we realize is an asset may have a total level of risk, but much of this risk we can get rid of by a diversification. And by diversifying, we're reducing this, it's the, the firm specific portion of the risk, the risk um, specific to each individual asset. By, by diversifying, we're, re we're reducing that without reducing um, without reducing the expected return. So diversification is going to reduce risk without reducing expected return. Now, we can only reduce risk to, uh, to the point where all the remaining risk isn't firm specific, it's systemic. It, it's risk in the macro economy, the macro economy. it's risk that interest rates go up, uh, it's risk of recession and so forth. So systematic risk is this risk that is left over by diversification. It is the risk that is inherent in the system that is applies to all stocks. But the really important aspect of this is, and the, and the thing that makes this, it's really important to understand and makes it really uh, interesting, is that uh, because we can't remove this risk, we are compensated for it. Now, when we diversify, we're getting rid of that, that firm specific risk and we're not losing expected return for it. So there's no reason to hold um, firm specific risk, so you are not compensated for it. And that's a really big takeaway out of this, is I, as a market participant, am not compensated for taking risk. I am only compensated for taking risk that must be taken, that we cannot diversify away. And one thing to keep in mind is this risk, systemic risk, must be taken. Um, the idea is we need people to buy stocks and, and bonds and so forth. Uh, by doing so, you are um, supplying uh, capital uh, to businesses, which they're going to turn around and build factories and employ people and, and, and uh, contribute to economic growth. So the idea is we need people to buy these securities, these assets. Um, they don't have to hold any of the, the, the firm specific risk. So they're, in buying that asset, you're not going to receive anything if you choose to hold that firm specific risk. But anyone buying those assets has to hold a systemic risk. So this is what you, uh, what you are compensated for. This is only what you are compensated for when you buy a security. Good. So that's the really important, that's what I have here. Only risk someone must hold, that's the systematic risk, and the only risk that you are compensated for. Those are big takeaways. Now, unpacking the rest of this in an asset measure, measured relative to the average asset, the important thing to get out of this is that the amount of systematic risk is not the same in every asset. Some assets have more systematic risk, some have less. We would say the beta of Tesla is the amount of systematic risk in Tesla. Um, so we have specific betas for every, every asset, stock, bond, and so forth. Uh, measured relative to the average asset, so the average asset is the market. If Tesla has a beta of two, it has twice the amount of systematic risk as the market. If a, a stock, um, Exxon, has, has a beta of 0.5, it has half. So and what that means is translated, if you're, if you're well, holding Tesla with more systematic risk, you should have a higher expected return. And if you uh, hold a, an asset with beta of 0.5, you should have a lower expected return because Tesla has more systematic risk. So in sum, beta measures the risk that someone has to hold, which is to say the risk that you are compensated for. It measures the amount of risk that you're compensated for in an individual asset. Um, good.